Welcome to this recorded presentation on OpenEd through connecting universities at their library HIPS, High Impact Processes. We appreciate you taking the time to check out this video today, and we're excited to tell you something about the work we've been doing at NC State and Kennesaw State University, bringing open education to collaboration across universities. I'm Will Cross. I'm the director of the Open Knowledge Center at North Carolina State, and I'm playing MC in this presentation. You can see the faces here of the other presenters. Each of them is going to introduce themselves over the next 20 minutes and talk to you some about the work that they've been doing and some of the lessons that they've learned as well. Here we, we tell you a little bit about some of the high points that we're going to be hitting over the next little bit. We're going to talk some about opportunities for collaboration across institutions when we're doing open education. We're going to talk about the importance of centering diversity, equity, and inclusion in this work. And we're going to talk some also about the opportunity to make the library the center of gravity when doing this collaborative work. We hope all, th all these things are interesting. And in order to dive more deeply into some of these conversations, I'm going to turn it over now to Carlos. Hello, my name is Carlos Christopher Goller, and I am an associate teaching professor in the biotechnology program at North Carolina State University. I teach molecular biology courses to undergraduate and graduate students from numerous programs on campus. Open educational resources and open pedagogy have emphasized the importance to me of learning by contributing and sharing beyond the classroom and lab. Inspired by the NC State University libraries, I have worked to redesign most lab-based courses I teach to promote open pedagogy through the creation of resources that can benefit current and future students. I am energized by the ideas and creativity that learners bring to the courses as they shape the direction of the course and improve the experience for others with tutorials, podcasts, and web pages. However, I wanted students in the courses I teach to connect with others and exchange these experiences and resources they create. I asked myself, how can we connect different courses and students to do open ed work? We began by connecting projects from courses I teach and then added partners on campus like the fantastic Eric McKinney. Still, I wanted students to be exposed to the ideas and feedback from learners at other institutions. How did we identify an opportunity for cross-university open ed work? Was the next question. Thanks to the support of the NC State University Libraries and Arlo.org network, I was able to attend my first open ed conference in 2021. I recorded a presentation about connecting different courses through student products available openly on WordPress sites. A couple of weeks after the conference, Dr. Richard Halstead Nuslock emailed me and we began exchanging ideas. We planned at first to connect Rich's course to a new 200 level course I was developing with the talented education postdoctoral scholar, Dr. Carly Shogren. To promote idea exchange and inspire students to think beyond biotechnology and sustainability and consider the topics discussed in Rich's course. While we did not have as much interaction between course participants this first semester, all three instructors and our libraries have met regularly. We exchange ideas and have presented together. The power of cross-university open ed work is evident. It was enriched through our courses, through the identification of resources and practices, and inspired us to think about larger initiatives. How did we identify cross-campus connections? I think flexibility and willingness to consider topics, and activities that we would routinely not incorporate in the courses we teach helped us connect. Our courses are seemingly different in topic, age of learners, and academic level. 
yet they share common teaching philosophies that impact the pedagogy and student experience. Transparency with students about the purpose of the assignment and the importance of multiple perspectives outside our course, campus, and local communities changed the narrative and made the assignment more meaningful to instructors and students. Finally, forward thinking helped the team consider new opportunities to improve what didn't work as desired and motivate the team to try new ways of connecting high-impact practices and open pedagogy. Finally, how can we open the way for new cross-campus opportunities? We can reach out to your open ed community, contact your libraries to search for colleagues on other campuses, or identify valuable skills that will help students in all courses beyond content. Importantly, we can share and communicate with your growing net of peers. Hello, I'm Dr. Carly Shogren, pronouns she, her, hers. I'm excited to share with you some of the work I do as an education postdoc in the biotechnology program at North Carolina State University, where I get to design and implement research courses in molecular biology, biotechnology, and bioinformatics. Um, I am fortunate to be able to promote open education in the development of these new course materials, um, as well as as part of this interdisciplinary collaboration. I'm excited to share with you a little bit of that work we do together. Incorporating diversity, equity, and inclusion into our open ed work um, is a really exciting opportunity to get to do and also just falls just right in line with the spirit of open education itself. And when we talk about these principles, it's important to talk and describe what we mean by them. Um, so I'm going to cover what we mean by diversity and why diversity is necessary to be inclusive, as well as how we can practice equity through our open education endeavors. Um, and I will share with you an example of one assignment we have in our 200 level biotechnology course that Dr. Carlos Goller and I designed together that also has an interdisciplinary collaboration step crossing over with Kennesaw State. So what is diversity? Human diversity refers to the variation of human experience, ability, and characteristics. Such a powerful definition and really important for us to think about how we can affirm diversity and promote its value in educational practices. And so why is diversity necessary to be inclusive when we can recognize diversity and embrace that every person has different lived experiences? We're affirming the value of collaboration and problem solving by leveraging multiple perspectives. We know from research that heterogeneous groups are better at problem solving, have more creative and innovative ideas. This is something we desperately seek out to model in our education work, as well as promote within our students as they're being trained to go out into the workforce. And so I think it's also really important that we frame this as a problem with our current practices. And probably not those of you listening, but at large, a lot of academic fields historically have not been composed of heterogeneous groups. They've been composed of homogeneous groups. So something I share with my students as I am a science educator is that without diversity, we do inferior science. And stating that in that form really gets students to hear that we need to be better. We need to embrace diversity to do our work more effectively. Not only that, when we think about this from this open education lens, inclusivity, bringing and welcoming more people to the problem solving table will affirm individuals unique identities so that they're all welcome to join in. I think this is a really important balance because if we can recognize that everyone has different lived experiences and that those are valuable, we can also think about equity. Um, 
speaking from my own perspective as a science educator, science capital and what students come in with already having been exposed to can often be an advantage if you have it or a barrier if you don't have it. And making sure that both the experiences that they've had in their past are valuable while also making sure that access to our assignments and knowledge and content is equitable and is not designed for some people to have a head start over one another. Um, and this is really key, I think, when we're starting to bridge between diversity and inclusivity into equity in our educational practices. And so how can we practice equity through open education? So thinking about equitable student support in our learning, um, where communities and individual students will have access to materials, ideas, content, support, regardless of their prior no knowledge or ability. We can also use teaching tools that can diversify student participation so we can hear more voices, more perspectives, promote collaboration so that students seek out outside perspectives and value them in their work, and remove barriers that would be unfair to some students. In these ways, we can empower student identities and ideas as integral parts of reusable course assignments that we ask them to create as part of open education assignments. And so in biotechnology and sustainability, that 200 level course that Dr. Goller and I have created, we have some examples for you. So um, incorporating diversity, equity, and inclusion into open education work. Um, I've got two examples. One right here um, comes from students' reflection on ethical reasoning case studies. Um, we have specific DEI course objectives associated with that assignment. Backwards design is one of the best ways we can immediately start practicing DEI work through our, our coursework. Um, come up with an objective that is explicit to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So here's two of ours. Identify potential issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the ethical reasoning case studies, as well as articles we discuss. Another objective is discuss diversity, equity, and inclusion and their impact on interdisciplinary grand challenges. So that's a way you can immediately begin to incorporate these into your own courses. Here's a project that we have as part of our course that also enables students to collaborate with students in Rich's class at Kennesaw State. So our class students create a public information resource explaining proper electronic waste disposal instructions in their specific North Carolina location of their choosing. They can pick a community they want to impact with this resource, a community that could be their hometown, a city of interest, somewhere a relative lives. Um, we keep it in North Carolina because that's the state that we live in. Um, but this could be changed depending on what your class is, where you're located. Picking something that's meaningful to your students pulls in their ident identity, pulls in their knowledge of that area or the knowledge they will gain about that area into the assignment. As well as being able to cross connect with different resources, both on our campus and off campus. So on NC State's campus, uh, part of this assignment has a media library consultation. Um, where students can learn about prod production resources that are at their disposal for this assignment and others as they continue to learn on NC State's campus. Additionally, they have outside perspectives through peer review coordinated between the information technology graduate students um, that Rich teaches at Kennesaw State. Um, so think about ways that you can connect between the resources available on your campus, connect ideas of what students can bring to assignments from their own lived experiences, uh, as well as connect outside of our own universities. My name is Chelsea Dixon, and I'm currently the Scholarly Communications Librarian at Kennesaw State University. This is an R2 institution located in the suburbs of the metro Atlanta area, and my educational background is listed on the screen. 
So I'll be speaking to you about some opportunities to leverage your institution's library in implementing open education practices on campus. Using my own experiences as an example, I'll discuss the benefits of creating and maintaining OERs as library guides or library guides solely about open educational resources, how to facilitate campus events for national weeks like Open Education Week, and the importance of fostering relationships with on and off campus supporters of open education. For those of you new to libraries, library guides, also called LibGuides or Research Guides, typically contain a wealth of information and resources. These resources are curated by librarians with expertise on that subject and might include links to books in your institution's catalog, databases, and other resources. You can also utilize the LibGuide platform to create an OER for a particular course. Many institutions have done this, and the LibGuide serves as an alternative to a textbook. The tabs can act as chapters in a book, and the boxes within the tabs are similar similar to sections of book chapters. Links to other resources can be added so students can access sources directly and the material can be created by the instructor. Additionally, the LibGuide will exist in perpetuity so students have constant access even when they're not enrolled in the course. On the screen is an example of my OER LibGuide at KSU which hosts information about grants for OERs, links to open textbook repositories, and tutorials on adapting, adopting, and creating OERs. Both types of guides can be embedded directly into a course shell. For instance, at KSU, we use the learning management system desire to learn or D2L and it's possible for instructors to include a module which has our LibGuide embedded directly into their course shell. You might also decide to host events for Open Education Week through the library. Open Education Week is an annual national celebration of OERs and the benefits of open education. It connects educators, librarians, and students worldwide, so why not become part of the movement? At KSU, we celebrate virtually every March with presentations and workshops on a variety of open education topics. We've had speakers discuss accessible and open course design, Creative Commons licenses, and student perspectives on OER. Incorporate diversity, equity, and inclusion into your slate of programming and allow student voices to be heard, which is an important aspect of open education as students are actually using the OERs we create. Also think about partnering with key organizations and individuals that support OERs and the open education movement. If your institution has a Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning, or CEDL, that's a great place to start. At KSU, the center works directly with faculty and leaders within our organization, and members of CEDL regularly help market my events for Open Access Week, and our Office of Undergraduate Research helps too. We have a strong rapport with the director of this office who has recommended student speakers for panel discussions during national weeks like Fair Use Week, Open Access Week, and Open Education Week. To make connections with your student government association. Again, student voices are so important. Students can serve as OER advocates both to and for their faculty as we're working towards textbook affordability, customized course materials that are up to date and inclusive, all to ensure their success. Off-campus organizations might include statewide initiatives and programs. For example, here in Georgia, we have Affordable Learning Georgia, which is an initiative of Galileo. They support OERs in many ways, but most notably they provide affordable materials grants to faculty across the university system of Georgia who wish to transform their course materials into no or low cost options. And the results of these grants, be they open textbooks or ancillary materials, are hosted in their repository, OpenALG. You might also partner with other librarians in your state or throughout the country. I'm always willing and excited to collaborate, so please feel free to email me at cdicks05 at kennesaw.com. Hello everyone, it's Rich Halstead Nuslock here, and I'm going to talk about designing new experiences that continue joining people, campuses, and high impact processes. I'm professor of IT at Kennesaw State University Marietta. I teach IT practice oriented courses in our Masters of Science. I've been engaged in research and development and open pedagogy for the last dozen years, much of which has been uh, supported by affordablelearninggeorgia.org, and I've designed a dozen or more OER-based courses. So as we've gone through this, we've discovered that we've ended up, through open ed, designing new learning experiences for students, where students have become co-producers of the learning space interactions through discussions and group projects, class materials, library holdings, general knowledge through their use of res 
usable assignments and publishing durable intellectual assets, such as posters and podcasts. And therefore, students have become co-producers of their own success. So this change, which uh, Carlos, Carly, Chelsea, and Will have articulated, touches many of the high impact processes or HIPs that we have from the A acu.org. Not only have we had uh, the design of new experiences for students, but as we've indicated, uh, this has resulted in new experiences for faculty and librarians. Faculty have transitioned from being the sole producers of higher education to collaborating and partner producers of the learning space. So faculty take on additional roles through open ed, such as coaching. Faculty can also add a student role by learning from their students through open ed. And since most always faculty are evaluators, open ed allows sharing that role too through, for example, peer student peer evaluation uh, processes. Librarians have transitioned from solely procuring and curating educational resources to being producing collaborators and partners with faculty and students. So libraries have become the points of connection for our learning spaces, and librarians provide the ties that combine learners together into wider learning communities. Least well understood of the new experiences are those for administrators. It starts with intellectual property holdings and licensing. One approach is it's for the public good. Another approach it's for sustainability of the organization. And a third approach is plain for revenue. So for administrators um, and faculty and students and librarians, uh, we want to leave you with the thought that open governance for open education is a prime area of opportunity for us to make progress. Thank you. All right, let's close with some takeaways from the things that you've just heard. The first takeaway that we really want to emphasize is that open education is a multiplier. The more people, the more institutions, and the more perspectives that are included, the better the outcomes are going to be. We also firmly believe that open can be a tool for inclusion and equity, but that the work needs to be done intentionally to make open education a successful tool in that space. You need to do that work intentionally in a way that removes barriers and that values everyone participating in the process. We also believe firmly that libraries are the connective tissue for this work, that libraries have a special role in gathering and making available the materials of open education and facilitating and incubating the communities that make this work successful in all the ways that it can be. And finally, we wanted to stress that working together means that everyone in the process has a role and everyone also has some new things to learn. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our presentation today. Uh, if you're listening live at OpenEd, we hope you'll share some questions in the chat and we're happy to answer those now. If you're engaging with, with this in another way, you should feel free to reach out to any of us at any time through the email addresses you see here. We hope you've enjoyed watching the video. We certainly enjoyed doing this work together and we look forward to hearing from you and to doing more work in the coming days.